we'll see how this shows up as far as uh, me manipulating the carriage stop and scribing the next uh, four or five graduations. So I'm on short. That's the short. One, two, three, four, and then a long one. And then back to One, two, three, four, and a medium. And so on, all the way around. By the way, I had this thing unplugged for this entire operation. Uh, disconnect the power. Uh, be safe. Okay, I'm just finishing up here with some of the short ones. Just got a few more to go. And a fellow hopes and prays that it comes out. Prayers answered came out even. Now there's a little shaving, a little burr at the end of every graduation. Some of them will just knock off almost with your fingernail. It's only five thousandths deep. You could uh, run a little emery cloth, turn the machine on and run a little emery cloth around there. I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, I'll do that later if it is necessary, but I hope it is not. But it will have a little bit uh, of a roughness to it. But you can make it as smooth as you want, but sometimes using an abrasive uh, uh, takes off the highlights. Now, that finally being done, and that's kind of nerve-wracking because you got so much work put into this at this point that, you know, you just hate to goof it up. and. Uh, uh, and I didn't, uh, thank you Lord, but uh, now I'm ready to do the, uh, the hardest part which is to stamp the numbers and uh, there, there's still room for error there so uh, my prayers will continue so I'm going to take this off of the machine and meet you over at the bench. Wow this is a long video and it's still not done. I think you all know that in a factory they wouldn't make these the way I'm showing you we're making one of. They in fact would uh, roll this on probably. They'd have a die with the uh, graduations and the numbers on there and simply and this would be hardened some way or another just roll that on there all the way around and it would be done. And that's how they uh, put the impression on a, a gun barrel. For instance Winchester would be in, uh, stamped in here or in reverse and just roll it right on there and it would say Winchester Repeating Arms Company. That's just a little sidelight here. Now uh, the reality here is, is that we need to stamp the numbers on. And I did take a little bit of a 320 abrasive paper after all. Changed my mind and cleaned this up and made the uh, graduations uh, look quite sharp. Don't you agree? Getting quite a reflection on there. I guess that's better. And that looks good. You see the long ones and the short ones and how I put this hole here about in the middle so it doesn't interfere with uh, any stamps. And this will be zero here. Or it could be zero right here with the little thumb screw off to the side so it doesn't interfere with the zero. I think that's how I'll do it. Probably that'll be the, the zero mark right there. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, number stamps. Most all of you have sets of uh, number or letter stamps. This is a complete set of uh, numbers and letters in one case. But more likely you're going to have a set like this and this is the eighth inch size. 
and eighth inch seems to be the appropriate size for this. You can buy them in different sizes, three thirty seconds and sixteenth and, and larger, but eighth inch is going to fit just right. Now this is a nice sharp set because they're new. If you have an older set and they're beat up and they're dull, and you know in the high school often they were dull because the kids would stamp a number or a name or something on a hardened stirrup ruler, thereby ruining both the ruler and the stamp. So if you got a dull one, you got to hit it harder than you would with a sharp one. Similarly, you have to strike a number eight harder than you would strike a number one. To get the same depth impression. So all of those things need to be considered here when you're doing this job. Also take note that on any set of stamps or most that I'm familiar with there's a little mark here and that's where your thumb goes and if your thumb is on that you won't get it upside down. Some have the actual number or letter stamped here and that also would go where your thumb is. Now if you do not have that, make sure that you examine it to determine what, what the top and the bottom is so you don't misstrike it. The only uh, exception to that rule is the number six and the number nine are the same. You need to practice stamping also so that uh, you realize how hard you need to hit it and always use a brass hammer and one this size, that's an eight ounce I believe, it's just about right. Brass doesn't tend to glance off of the, uh, the hardened stamps. But one thing that I noticed right away is that I thought, well, I'm going to stamp the number 10 here so we get the number 1 and 0. Well, several things. First of all, how are you going to strike them both at the same time? You probably aren't, but uh, the point I'm making here is that with this, uh, and they're not the same length either. Kind of slipped on me, but the number 10 is going to be way too far apart if you just hold these like this. Just going to be too far apart. So we need to consider that spacing. Now if you just lay this in a V block around the wood and you stamp them, uh, your marks, your, your letters and numbers are just going to be all over the place. And you want this to look fairly professional, like it you know wasn't made by hammer and chisel mechanic. So in order to do that, I came up with a little jig and of course this is another job and that's why it takes so long to do something like this. It takes even longer to make the video and this is a long video. But what I did here is I took a piece of aluminum to make this jig and this piece is three inches by four inches and I got a three eighths hole in there and it's got uh, it's uh, one inch thick. That's my living blueprint. And this hole I guess I forgot to mark that but that's one and three quarters so that'll fit in there. This slot is three-eighths. Now to start with, I was going to make it half inch so it would fit two of these. And I just told you why I didn't want to do that because uh, the spacing would be too uh, far apart for the double digit numbers, which most all of them are except the zero. Furthermore, when we stamp this, I'm taking a flat stamp and I'm stamping on a curved surface. So other than the center one, which will be zero, that'll be right in the center of the line, that's, that's going to stamp pretty well. But the other ones, you know, you are literally, I'm going to exaggerate here, you're stamping off center. Not that much, but you can visualize now that one side of the number, let's take a bit of the zero here, is going to strike a little bit deeper than the other side. I think you understand what I'm talking about with all these different points that I'm making. As you know, I'm a man that wears a suspender and a belt. So I took the liberty here of marking these with a felt tip pen. That'll be my zero. And make sure you work your way around this way. This is 10, not 10 in the other direction. 20 and so on all the way around. And 90 and back to zero. And you can see why now that I have the set screw you know, off to the right here where you naturally would grip it. I think now you can see why I pre-marked them. That's a zero, although not a very good one. Can you see just a little bit here of my uh, index mark? That's 
how deep I made this. I believe quarter inch for the slot here. So that's where the zero was going to be. So I will lay it in there, but you know, that's going to be pretty sloppy. So what I did was to take uh, some 16th inch thick brass and just made shims on each side. So I got a shim there and a shim here, and that's only necessary on the zero. I only use those one time on the zero because uh, that'll center it. There's quarter inch plus one sixteenth and one sixteenth equals uh, uh, three eighths. So that's a three eighths slot. I, I think I said that. Now, just by holding my thumb on there like that and striking it now with the brass hammer, I'm on a lead plate here. Just it could be a steel plate, but I think that the wood just kind of uh, bounces. Strike it once. You don't want to strike it repeatedly. Just once. There we got it, but we still got a black smudge on there from the, the marker. Next comes the number 10, and you can see the magic marker 10, and also right down there the little graduation mark, the long one. So we're going to stamp this twice, first with a 1, and here's the one. You know, if you're not sure about this, strike these on, uh, on wood or, or a scrap metal or something. Make sure you know how to do that. Pra in other words, practice with it. I practiced for this video. This is a piece of eighth inch key stock there to space this out, see? Quarter plus eighth equals three eighths. Now holding that with my thumb, again, I'm going to strike this. one time, not repeatedly. Similarly, with the zero, I'll move it to the other side, use the eighth inch shim, and by the way this nut here is just a finger tight. And now I'm ready for the zero. So the number 10 has been stamped. I'm going to take that out and show it to you. There's the number zero that I stamped a few moments ago. Pretty good impression. Probably could have been hit harder. That zero was good. Notice that the spacing between the 1 and 2 is just right. Also, uh, using the jig keeps the, the uh, numeral in the correct position here from top to bottom. Now notice that the 1 didn't strike here real well on the serif on the bottom. And the reason for that again is because I'm stamping a curved surface with a straight stamp. I could have overcome that I suppose by striking it larger with a 1 pound brass hammer. Now I'm going to work my way around number 20, 30, 40, and it's all going to be very similar to what, uh, what I did here on number 10 using a number and a spacer. And always using the jig. I know it's, if you're only going to make one of these, it seems like it really is a chore probably to make a jig like this. But this is something that could be made. At, well, I suppose that took an hour. I mean, I didn't do that in 15 minutes. It took an hour most of the time uh, for the boring this so one and three quarter uh, bottom uh, flat bottom hole all right this is the very last digit and it's uh, the zero of the 90 I'm using a bigger brass hammer and getting a better impression but I didn't start that till about the number 30 Let's take it out of there and see what it looks like. The number 90 came dangerously close to the, uh, the hole. But there we got it. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. You can see they're a little deeper now. 60. 70, 
80, 90, and back to zero. The piece is done. Now I can, or you can, if you make one of these, uh, blacken this, and I told you before that uh, uh, even a magic marker works, or uh, shoe polish, if they still make it, and uh, Kiwi brand I would recommend, or Shinola, or spray paint it, just a dab of paint, and, and then wipe off the excess with thinner. I don't think I'm going to do that to this, because I, I have done that to the other one. And I believe that soon enough uh, they'll get blackened just by uh, grime and, and dirt and so on. So I'm just about ready to install this one. Now I've already prepared just a little piece of uh, brass, that's eighth inch brass, and for now I'm just going to use a 832 a cap screw rather than, uh, than a knurled uh, thumb screw because I don't have one the right length. So that's what I'm going to use to hold it on. Always use a, a little piece of brass that will push against that thread and near the keyway so you don't damage it because that thread is pretty well buggered up on that Logan lathe. But this is ready to take over to the lathe now and install and I'm reasonably satisfied with it. But it sure was a lot of work, wasn't it, for uh, such a dial. Step over to the Logan with me. At long last, the job is done. Here's the final product. Now again, I haven't blackened it like this prototype, which might improve the visibility just a little bit. And a knurled thumb screw will make a little improvement here, but uh, even a cap screw has a little bit of a knurl on it for a grip. And let's compare it now to the original again. See how much difference there is in size. Of course you can make this any size you want. You can make it even bigger if you had an ocean. At this time I have not, nor do I have any intentions of uh, redoing the compound rest here but I may at another time. But 98% of the time when I do any feeding I'm doing it with the cross slide rather than the, the compound. And when I do feed with the compound generally I'm not interested in uh, thousands anyway if I'm cutting a taper. So this is the more important dial I believe. But this is a possibility in the future if there's enough interest in it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this rather long video on uh, enlarged micrometer dials for the Logan lathe, and this could be adapted to just about any other brand of lathe as well. The Atlas or the Logan being the two most popular. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.